Good morning, everyone. It's Cameron from Venus Theory, and welcome to another episode of Morning Coffee with Cameron. In today's video, I wanted to walk you through the basics of getting started with Cherry Audio Voltage Nucleus, and just kind of give an overview on modular synth patching in general, and talk about some of the kind of core fundamental concepts and principles that you'll need to know in order to get started. So in case you don't already have it, you can get Voltage Nucleus absolutely free from now until August 31st, and you can find a link to that down in the description below. So let's dive in and get started. All right, so here we are with Voltage Nucleus, and like I said today, I just wanted to do a video on basically the core concepts of modular patching, as well as just help get you familiar with Voltage Nucleus. So when it comes to Voltage Nucleus, this is it. This is the UI. If we open up our library, this is where you can access all of the modules. You have 22 in total, which is everything you need to get started. And then we have the Perform button here, which opens the Performance Rack. This is a set of nine macro knobs and four buttons that you can assign to just about anything. So up in the top rack here, we have our CV outs, Poly CV outs, MIDI, Transport, Audio in, Main outs, and Auxiliary outs. So in this video, we're mostly going to be sticking with just the CV out basics of pitch and gate. Uh, however, we'll talk about some of these other ones and the audio input, just so you guys are aware, this is the audio input from your host. So in this case, it's picking up my microphone right here. So I could actually wire this up to where I could add a quick delay effect to my voice and we would hear it now. Pretty cool stuff. Okay, so before we really dive into this, there are a couple things I think are important to define, and that is mostly CV, gate, and trigger. These are kind of the three big things when it comes to modular stuff. So first off, the big one is CV. Now, what is CV? That is control voltage. Now, voltage in the modular world has a range of 10. Typically, this is 0 to positive 10 or negative 5 to positive 5. Now, voltage does just about anything. This can determine pitch. This can do modulation, this can change the amount of modulation being applied, it can do a whole number of things. So this is kind of the big one to know. The other two are gate and trigger, and I think people can be a little confused by gates and triggers, but it's actually not that hard. So a gate is a value of one or zero. It is something is happening, nothing is happening. And a trigger is just boom, something happened, boom, something happened. So let's go ahead and use an oscilloscope to demonstrate this. So another way to think of this is a gate is going to be for as long as I hold the key down on my keyboard over here, and a trigger is just going to say a key was pressed. So if I hold down a key on my keyboard on the gate, we see that the oscilloscope goes up to positive 5, and if I let go, it goes back down to 0. Something is happening. Nothing is happening. Something happened, nothing is happening. Something is happening now, nothing is happening. Okay, so now let's take a look at a trigger. So if I press a key and hold it down, you see in the oscilloscope, we just get this one little bloop. And this is just saying, yep, hey, something, something happened. Look at me, something happened. And if I just press it a bunch, hey, things happening, things happening, but it's not sustaining when I hold it down. Okay, so that is gate and trigger. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with something basic. We're gonna build a little subtractive synth patch. As you may or may not know, this is going to consist of a few things. We're going to need an oscillator, we're going to need an amplifier, we're going to need an envelope, and we're going to need a filter. So we can go over to the library here and find all of these things. We're gonna need the amplifier or the VCA, we're going to need an envelope, which is the envelope generator, we're going to need the oscillator. Let's grab an oscilloscope just because we'll take a look at that, and we're going to need a filter. Okay, so we've added a bunch of modules. We can just right click and align modules to the left. Everything is nice and neat. And if I press a key, nothing is happening. Why? Because we need to wire everything up. Okay, so first things first, we're going to need to get the oscillator working. We want something to make sound. So we're gonna send the pitch of the CV out to the keyboard CV. This is the input here. This is going to tell the oscillator, hey, this is the pitch that's currently playing. So if you just wired this straight to the output right now, let's go ahead and engage the limiter first. Uh, if we wire this straight to the output, it's just going to be one thing happening all the time. But it is going to have pitch. So we need it to only play when I'm playing a note. And how do we do that? With the amplifier and the envelope. So now we're going to send our saw into the amplifier. And if I wire the output of the amplifier to the output, nothing happens. However, I can use the gain to increase or decrease the amount of output. So amplifiers or VCAs are very powerful things and you can use them for a bunch of different purposes and not only just to create an output. So uh, let's go ahead and wire up our envelope to control the amplifier. So we're gonna need the gate. So the gate of the CV out is going to go to the gate input. 
The envelope output is going to go into the CV in of the amplifier, or the control voltage in. This is the amount that it's going to modify the amplifier. So right now, if I just play this, we have our ADSR, and right now it's just sustaining the note for as long as I play it. There we go. Okay, so let's just change that a little bit with some decay and release. Cool, so let's send the output of the amplifier to the input of the filter. There we go, and we'll send the output of the low pass to the oscilloscope, and we'll also hold down. And you can see here, we can actually do six things in any of the inputs or outputs, which is pretty powerful. And we'll wire that to the output. So right now, if I go and play this, we get the saw and we can move the filter. And we can just up the sustain. Cool, so it's not the most interesting patch in the world, but it does work. So how could we make this more interesting? Well, we can apply modulation. We can do this in a number of ways. One of the kind of classic ones is just to get another envelope generator and assign that to the filter. So we'll send the gate over here. Uh, you can wire both ways, so I can go like this to tie it to the gate, or I can hold down and grab one of the other outputs and wire it in here. Okay, send the envelope out to the frequency mod one of the filter. We'll increase the modulation amount. Drop the filter down, and let's do an attack, and a sustain here, and a decay there. So now the filter is going to move around with the modulation from the envelope. Except right now it's not. Uh, let's go ahead and change the mode to linear. Cool, and we could drop the sustain to something lower. Cool, you get the idea. Okay, so let's add some more modulation. Let's do an LFO. This is one of the other classic modulation sources. So let's go ahead and get rid of that for now, and let's send the output of the triangle to the frequency mod here, and we can adjust the rate. Pretty cool stuff. But the cool thing with modular stuff is you can wire multiple things to happen. And we can do a combination of different things. So we'll change this to linear, up the mod amount. So now the envelope generator and the LFO are going to affect the filter. Let's change the amount of the LFO and change the rate. And now we should get something really interesting and more complex. <laughs> Cool, so we could also add another amplifier, and we could wire the output of the second triangle to the input of the amplifier, and the output of that to this first mod here. So we have two modulations going to frequency mod one, and we can use the gain to attenuate the amount of the LFO signal being sent to uh, the filter frequency mod one here. <laughs> We could change the rate to something really fast. Much more complex and much more interesting. Okay, so as you may or may not know, LFO stands for Low Frequency Oscillator, and oscillator being the operative word for this next part. So let's go ahead and delete the LFO, delete the amplifier, and let's just reset this, and let's go ahead and leave this envelope here. Okay, so let's grab another oscillator. So one of the other really cool things about modular stuff is you can modulate things at the audio rate, or in other words, very, very quickly. So instead of an LFO, we can use our standard oscillator, and I guess this is like an HFO or an audio rate uh, modulator of some kind. Okay, so let's go ahead and zero out this envelope. There we go. Okay, so now let's send the sawtooth output to frequency mod one. And if I play this right now, the saw wave is going to affect the filter cutoff. So what we could do is use the frequency mod input and send an envelope into that. And we'll do that. We'll change this to the low mode and we'll add a decay. And now this is going to slow down because we're changing the frequency that's coming out of this oscillator that's providing modulation of the filter.
pretty cool. So if we tied the pitch into this as well and set this up here, let's get rid of the frequency mod. We could actually uh, tune this up a fifth. And now this is going to change the filter cutoff at a musical rate. We could drop that down an octave. Or we could slightly detune the oscillators. Pretty powerful stuff. Okay, so in terms of the other basic CV outs, uh, just before we wrap things up here, we have velocity, aftertouch, sustain, bend, and mod wheel. So we can do kind of the basic stuff. Let's go ahead and add uh, the mod wheel to the filter. Um, we could also add aftertouch to the filter as a secondary uh, modulation. And we could do some pitch bend. Let's grab a bend limiter. And we'll send the bend CV here. And this is going to allow us to bend. Let's do an octave up and a uh, whole step down. This is going to go into the keyboard CV. And then I guess we could uh, maybe tie velocity to... Eh, there's not really anything useful. Um, let's wire up a square wave, actually. We'll do velocity to the pulse width uh, modulation amount. And yeah, that's basically it. Um, you know, these are all the basic things that we can do. So our aftertouch. We'll open the filter, the mod wheel. Affects the filter. Pitch bend is going to go up an octave. Down a whole step. And then our velocity affects the pulse width. Pretty cool stuff. And this is really, really powerful once you dive into bigger patches and wire these up to things in interesting ways. Okay, so another cool thing we could mess around with is step sequencers. And these can actually be used for a couple things and not just creating sequences of notes. So let's go ahead and grab an amplifier. Let's grab the envelope. We'll need an oscillator. Okay. And we can create a basic step sequence. Let's change the number of steps to four. We'll do C1, C1, C2, C3, and C4. Okay. So now we can use this to create a sequence of steps, hence the name step sequencer. Okay, so the gate out is going to go to the gate in, envelope out to CV into the amplifier, output of the amp goes to the output, and we'll send the saw to the input. Now the output of this can go to keyboard CV, and that is going to create a sequence of four steps. It's going to play the note C across four octaves. Change this. Cool, but not really the most interesting thing ever. Okay, so what else could we do with this? So one of the other things we could do is actually use this as kind of an arpeggiator in a way. So if I'd grab my pitch and send that to the CV offset of the step sequencer, and let's go ahead and add a trigger to the start, and as soon as I play something, it's going to trigger this to start playing. So originally it was C, but what if I hit the note G now on my keyboard? Cool. Let's try F sharp. There's a D. There's an A. You get the idea. We can actually use this to create little arpeggiated type effects. We could increase the rate to make it faster. Pretty cool stuff. So one of the other things we can actually use a step sequencer for is to create modulation of something. So let's go ahead and grab a filter. And there we go. So right now, uh, let's wire the gate here and let's wire the output of this to go to frequency mod one, wire the output of the amp into this and the output of the low pass. There we go. So now we have our subtractive synth patch. Let's go ahead and make that sustained. And we could increase the mod amount. We'll change this to linear, drop the cutoff to something really low. And what we can do is disable the output quantize. So when it's quantized, this is used for musical purposes. This is to keep it in the intervals of a half step. So that way you can create little sequences of notes. 
If we disable that, we get a range of zero to positive five. So we can do a full eight step sequence here and move these values around and we'll just hit play and let it run. Slow this down a bit. And if I play a note now, the filter is gonna jump around. We could change the voltage range, which also acts as a way to attenuate the output. We could maybe set it in the middle. Pretty cool stuff. So what if we wanted to smooth that out? And that's one of the other things I wanted to demonstrate because this is going to showcase two things, I guess. Thing one being the glide module, which is right here. And thing two being that you can use modules for other things as long as you kind of think it through with your thinking noodle, thinking hat, whatever. Okay, so the output of this is gonna go into the glide input. We'll wire that to the input of the oscilloscope so we can take a look at what's happening. And then we'll send the output to the filter. So right now, if I play something, same thing's happening. Let's increase the voltage range. So we can see here that we have just a sequence of steps that are very square-like. So if I increase the amount of glide, you'll see that we smooth that out. And we could change the rate to constant. Or the curve rather, and we could change it back to linear and maybe decrease the speed. Pretty cool stuff. So that's definitely something to keep in mind as well, is that you, know, you can wire up modules for maybe, I guess, somewhat unconventional purposes, but you know, there's, Usually more than one way to do something, which is a really interesting way to approach creating sounds and patches for your music. So the last thing I wanted to demonstrate in this video is creating macros and stuff, uh, because that's important to know about. So uh, let's start off with the step sequencer, I guess, because this is probably going to be everyone's first question. So if you had more than one step sequencer, um, let's grab another. And let's change the steps to something else. We'll disable output quantize. Okay. Um, Sure, and output is going to go into here. Output of this is going to go to the pitch. Okay, and then the gate is going to go to the amp or envelope. Cool, and then the gate of this doesn't need to go anywhere. Okay, so now we need to chain these two together. So we're going to grab the gate and change the clock of this one to external. So right now, I have two step sequencers, and unfortunately, they're not gonna start at the same time, but that's pretty easy to fix, and that's what we're gonna do with these buttons up here. So uh, let's tie both of the play buttons to this first button. So we're gonna right click, perform assign button one. Right click, perform assign, start button. And we're gonna do the same thing with the stop button. So right click, perform assign, button two. Right click, perform assign, button two. Okay, so now if I hit start. <laughs> Both these start, hit stop, and both of them are going to stop. Okay, so now that these two are wired together, we can hit the start button, and hit stop. Start, stop, start. Stop. So that is one way that you can use this. Otherwise, uh, let's say we want to do change something over time. Uh, let's go ahead and drop this to like a four step sequence that's much less annoying. Um, let's just do, I guess, C minor. So we'll do D sharp one. We'll do G one and then C one. Okay. So now we should have a nice little C minor arpeggio and this filter is going to step around from this other step sequencer. But let's say I wanted to move the cutoff so I could right click on the cutoff and we could MIDI learn it, but we're gonna assign it to a performance knob because let's say there's multiple things we wanna control with a single controller movement. So perform assign knob one and then I'm going to MIDI learn that, move my controller. There we go. So now as I play this sequence, I can move the fader on my controller. Similarly, uh, we could do something like the mod amount to knob two and let's MIDI learn. 
There we go. Okay, so now if I played this, and let's say this was a big sequence, and there's like five different things going on. You can jam out and have something going on, but control it with your controller or interface or whatever it is that you're using. And this is a really, really cool and powerful way to interact with your patches, especially once you get into like generative stuff and sequenced stuff. Uh, this is a really good way to kind of create evolution over time. And especially because you can tie things to other things. So we get multiple things tied to this second knob. And that would be really, really powerful if we had, you know, a really large performance rack. So I guess that's pretty much it, and I hope this video demonstrated the kind of core concepts and fundamentals of modular patching, and I hope this inspired you to kind of get started and dive into it, because there's just so much you can do, and just modular stuff in general opens up this whole other world of sound design possibilities and shaping things in new and really creative ways, and I think Voltage Nucleus is a great way to do that. So yeah, I hope this video kind of lit the spark for you and I hope that you are gonna go run off and play around with this all night and experiment with uh, different things and see what you can come up with. And that's it for this video guys, so thanks for watching, I hope you learned something, be sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys again soon.